And then what we have here is we have our, our wedding planner. So we've got the date of the wedding and there we've got the number of days remaining. So that's just a formula where I've typed in B3 minus today. So every time you open this file, it will automatically work out how many days there are between Christmas this year, which is when the wedding is, and today's date. So if I change the date of the wedding to the 1st of February 2012, then there are 20 days remaining to the wedding. That is the budget. So all I've done there is typed in the budget. And again, I've just noticed that it zoomed in quite large. So I'm going to reduce the zoom. And that way I know the text is smaller, but you can see the whole page. And the spend to date, that is a formula which is just adding up D11 to D100. And what you can see here is D11 down to D100. Now I could have said D11 to D500. I could have said D11 to D50. I could have said D11 to D60,000. I just picked D100 because in my estimation we wouldn't have more than 100 items uh, listed in the, um, the list there. But you can always go and amend that. So if you did have more than 100 items, then you can just go and amend the formula. And even though there are blank cells in there, it makes no difference at all. Because uh, as you add extra entries here, so let's say uh, we had the, um, the iPad. Of course, we need the, um, the wedding iPad. And uh, who does that belong to? Well, let's say that's going to belong to the wedding. And the maximum spend will be 700. And the actual cost of that would be 600. So what it's done um, there is it's automatically updated the spend amount. Okay, because the formula is already adding up D11 to D100. And then the remaining is D6, B6 minus B7. So it's literally just your budget minus what you've spent. And you know you could see then if you go over budget. The percent of the total, that is just so that you can see how much you are spending in terms of a percentage. So how much you are spending um, for each item. So it's a percentage. And that's just worked out as a formula that is taking um, D11, which is the actual cost, and working that out as a percentage of B7, which is the uh, spend to date. And that is absolute, so it can be copied down and keep referencing B7 as we copy down for the reasons that I explained a little bit earlier on. And then over here, we have who paid for it. This would be a good um, uh, candidate for a drop down list as well, like I showed you in the last example. Over here, we have a pivot table. Sorry, no, we don't have a pivot table. I could have done that as a pivot table, but I actually chose to do that with a sum if function. So you can see the sum if function. Now, the sum if function, what that does, it's like the sum function in that it adds up a block of figures, but it does it conditionally. So in this case, it's saying, look at the range F11 to F34, which is whether it's bride, groom, etc., etc. It's that column there. OK, so look at that. And if that cell, so each one of those cells has got the value from H11, which is that, then look at the range D11 to D34, which is the cost, and add it up. So it's only adding up the figures from column D if the value from column H matches the data in column F. It's the sum if function. And then I've copied that down. That's another good use of absolute because we want the H 
11 to change to the H12 to H13, etc. as we copy the formula down. But we don't want the 11 to 34 to change because they're fixed. The chart has just been done as a straight chart based on that data. And you'll notice that we've got the words bride or groom in blue or pink. And the way that that is done is using conditional formatting. OK, so the way that's done, you select the cells, go to conditional formatting. And I've already set the rules up. So I go to manage rules and conditional formatting means that it will format the cell based on conditions. So if the cell value has the word groom in it, then format it according to the formats that I've got, which in this case is set the colour to blue. Whereas if it's got bride in it, then format the text to pink. So that is how you can automatically apply formatting. Um, I've seen people use that in many situations. Uh, if a figure is over a certain value, then change it to red. If it's over another value, change it to green and things like that. People uh, often use it to, to indicate the status of a project. So if a project is over budget, show it as red. If it's under budget, show it as green, things like that. The reception tab. OK, let's zoom out so you can see that. Make that a bit smaller. What we have here is we have the names of all the people who have been invited to the reception. And the person who typed this data in for me has typed it all in capital letters. And the thing is, I want to be able to create name cards for the tables. So place cards, but I don't want those all in capitals. So what I've done is I've gone and used a formula which will automatically convert the capitals to what they call proper case, which is where the first letter of each uh, word is capitalized. And that is using the proper function. So in that way, that formula, if you look at that, I've got equals proper of A2. So convert the contents of A2 to proper case and join that to a space and join that to B2 converted to proper case. And that is how you get that information in there. Then we've got the um, what table they're on. And then we've got what uh, they're choosing for each um, part of the meal. And again, that's done with a, a drop down list where the drop down list values are stored in a separate sheet just so they're out of the way. Over here, I've got countif formulas, which is very similar to sumif, but it does a count. So what I'm doing there is I'm saying count the values in the range D2 to D35, which is that, that's the, what table people are on, but only if it matches I2, which has the value of 1 in it. So in other words, only count the values there that match that, and then we copy it down like that. So what it's doing there is it's telling us how many people are on each table. So if, uh, if uh, Amy said, I don't want to be on table two because I don't like Rachel. So you know what it's like at a wedding. I'm going to put um, Amy on table one. So I put Amy on table one and now it updates to show that there are 10 people on table one and there are only eight people on table two. And I've done a very similar thing here with the starters and the main course. I've done counts to count how many melons appear in there, how many soups appear in there and so on and so forth. And then I've formatted the cells. What I've done there is just selected the cells and applied a background format and applied a colour format to the text and the same thing there.